Hi there and welcome back or welcome if it's your first time seeing us. Now, so many of you started to follow us on YouTube through the build process, or I should say rebuild of Camp Bedrock, Wilma, the truck here, as we went from a rooftop tent onto the ATO Atlas topper. And what we wanted to do is come back and sort of do an update, tell you the things we loved, the things we liked, and the things that we might tweak here in the winter season before we head back out in the 24 exploring season. So we're going to jump into that right now. Well, as many of you know, we are on the tail end of an eight-week road trip where we drove all the way out to Alaska, toured around Alaska, drove all the way back home. And when we talk about our trip with a lot of family and friends, we get asked, how could you guys be that together so close in such a small space? We don't know. We like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's something to consider. We, we yes. don't really have a problem being really close like that for extended periods of time. Like we, we're like we're serious cuddlers, but every relationship's a little bit different. Yeah. And what we've learned in talking to people is that a lot of people like it, get anxiety thinking yeah. about being as close as you would be with a build like this or really yes. even a van. Because I do put what we've done really very close to yeah. uh, van life. We This is like a narrow queen up here. It's a, it's a little tighter. It's about that same length. Yep. And then the way we've built out the back, we're basically living, if it's, especially if it's really <laughs> bad weather, in about a five by five and a half foot yeah. space area. I mean, that's we're playing games, but we're, we're pretty close. Yeah all the time and if that's something that is making your skin curl <laughs> think about that like you might not to say yeah. that you still wouldn't enjoy a build like this and to do this kind of thing but it might be a weekend warrior type setup yes. or a, maybe a week or two it is weeks definitely something to consider it does change when you are on the road and close yeah over basically two months mm -hmm. like we were. But yeah. uh, for us, the build and everything was absolutely great. Yep. But as we've already alluded to, that doesn't mean, especially for builders like us, <laughs> uh, you can always tweak, you can always yes. change, you can always improve. And I, I think you have had some ideas on the inside and yep. we had one thing we had to fix. So let's jump into that, babe. All right. Well, the interior of the truck worked really well for us. We are happy with everything we did in here. We did have one minor problem. Uh, the way that we attached the back rack to the hoop on the truck, uh, we had a, a piece of metal that came over and we used a rubber grommet inside it to go around the hook. Unfortunately, the bumps and everything on the Dalton Highway and all the other roads, it caused it to wear through the grommet. So it started squeaking. Um, we had to use our trusty gear tie here to go around and secure it together. Worked really well for us. We just had to keep tightening it up every time we turned around. But now that we are back, we have already made a correction for it. Uh, we found some aluminum clamps that kind of alligator around the hoop and then screw down and clamp it really tight. So we have made that change and we're so far we're optimistic that's gonna be good. Another thing the bumpy roads did for us, um, it accentuated the need to keep our shoes attached to our shelves. They would want to jump out every once in a while. So we use some leftover bungee cord here and made a loop with it so that we can go around, strap it in, put our shoes on it. It's adjustable here so that we, you know, one, sh one set of shoes, two pair, whatever, at, or no shoes and something else on there, we can make it work to keep them on the shelf. The other thing we found was our jackets didn't really have a home. Once you got them out of their bag, put them on, we were wadding them up, finding corners to throw them into or throwing them over top of stuff so they were getting in the way. So we bought some things that slide into the aluminum extrusion and allow us to put hooks on them and then we can hook our jackets to those and they are where our shoes are so they're back and out of the way, hang there, no problems. The last thing in here of note would be our Starlink box. We built this box, it worked great. It kept it sturdy, secured. The problem is we had to keep moving stuff to get to it. And then once we did get to it, then if it was raining, like it did most of the time we were there, 
we were having to work together to try to hurry up and get the pieces out so that we wouldn't get rain and water inside the truck so much. So the plan is to basically convert this box to a drawer with a shelf on it. So then you just pull the drawer out and you can walk away with it, set everything up. That way you don't have to move anything. And if it's raining, hurry up, pull it out, shut the door, you're good to go. We really are happy with the rest of the build back here with the deep storage and the fridge freezer setup and our shelving. We loved it. So now that we're done with this interior, let's go to the truck interior. Now this interior, everything worked well for us. We did very well at the planning of where things would go and what cubbies and where and everything, except for one thing. When we plan for our leveling blocks to be right here by our tailgate, which works really well, swing gate, not so much, which we weren't even planning for it to be there, but it ended up having time. We learned quickly that it was difficult. We gotta open a swing gate before we can get into tailgate and then we can get the leveling blocks. So the plan is to find a place for them to be outside when we are using the swing gate. Otherwise, everything is great. Heat ducts work. We had warm air up top and down below when we had to be separated and he was working and I was laying in bed. Our deep storage worked well. Um, we are happy with the cubbies for our clothes. We could hold two weeks of our clothes in there. I had no idea we could do that. So that was awesome. Our crates where we had those planned out, they worked great. We changed the order a little bit of where the crates were, but ultimately everything was great there. Um, yeah, we're pleased with the way the interior all turned out. With that said, we did already make one change slash improvement. We had the curtain up here that blocked the sliding window so that we had privacy. It worked well for that part of it, but when we would sit down, you would catch it and kind of pull down on the curtain rod and bow it a little bit. Um, we decided that we still wanted the privacy, but we want to be able to use the sliding glass window when it was raining because it's the only window we have that is completely covered in the case of rain and won't let anything in except for bugs. So the cover is made with reflective bubble wrap material and it has a screen in the middle of it and the cover, so you unsnap it, roll the cover up, it'll stick up to the wall on the carpeted wall and now we have a screen so we can use that sliding glass window and have a screen over it to keep all the buggies out all right well alana has now passed that baton to me to comment and talk about all the things that we're going to do on the exterior not too many but before i jump into those mods i want to talk about the electrical system and really how it performed for us with some really significant testing on our alaska trip for those of you that followed the build, and for those of you that didn't, I'll post links above and below down in the description. We ended up installing two 100 amp hour Battleborn LiPo 4 batteries. That was basically our container for juice. And then we also installed a whole host of other electrical goodies that gave us 300 watts of solar charging on the roof whenever the sun would finally show its face. But we also could charge off the alternator anytime the engine was running and shore hook up on the rare occasion that we had that as well. I cannot tell you, it was very reliable. We had no issues and it did everything we needed to do. Now that said, we did constantly keep in mind what kind of electric we were using, what the, cons what the consumption of those devices was, and we managed those. I'll give you a good example. The Starlink router and dish uses about 50 watts whenever it's running. You need it to run for about an hour before the data really gets stable and good enough to host a web meeting or something like that. We would toggle that off at night when we were asleep and we'd make sure that when I had to start my work day the next day, I got up in time to start it an hour in advance. If I had just let it run the whole time, we would have used a lot more electric. Your laptop choice also matters if you're using a computer. Small laptops like my wife's Surface and my work computer, they only use 30 watts when they're plugged into AC, whereas my editing computer for photos and video has a 240 watt brick. That dude really only lasts about a day and we're completely drained on those batteries. So we're constantly juggling or thinking about that. A trick that we used is we also have an inverter built into the truck and we'd make sure that when we were driving, if we had enough time, we'd plug those in and make sure that the batteries in those devices were charged as full as, as possible so we weren't relying on the house batteries of the truck. For those of you that are using the lunchbox type systems, the Jackeries or these other units, 
I think you could get by, especially with lighting. It's really gonna come down to those long-term consumers like heaters, electric heaters, or anything that's using that wattage all the time on whether it would work for you. I'm really happy to have this tucked away, reliable, something I don't have to worry about, and it did everything we needed it to do. So now, exterior stuff. Okay, first up, I'm gonna talk about the awning, and not because I have any issue with it or really even wanna tweak it, but there's something I'd like to add that's a little more challenging than you might think. Our awning is the OVS Nomadic. Uh, it's a 270 plus, so it comes from the back all the way around the passenger side. It's got the straight section, so it reaches all the way out over the two passenger side doors as well. It was absolutely lovely. When we had rain, it covered us great. We were able to stay dry. We were able to get access inside those doors of the truck, which is handy because that's where our fridge is at without any issue. However, there was a couple times that we were out camping where we were close to other campers and we thought a little bit of privacy would be nice. They make sides for our awning to go with this. The thing about them is, it's the exact same heavy duty fabric that the top is made out of. So when those sides are off, they fold not only heavy, but bulky and large. And we just don't really have that kind of space to add to our setup to justify carrying them around. What I would love is if someone made sides for an awning like this that would zip up kind of the same way, but be made out of that really light material, like a backpacking tent really light stuff. Just give me some privacy, make it really light, something that could be rolled or even stuffed really easily like a backpack tent. So much so, I'm trying to talk Alana into sewing that up, but she's not liking the idea. So if you guys know of, an, of a side to go with that that's really light like that, please let us know. Otherwise, I'm going to keep trying to get Alana to make that and do some of her good seamstress stuff like she did with that window cover. Well, something that we can and will be making some changes to is this table carrier hitch swing contraption that I made really just days before departing for Alaska. We have been very happy with it. It held up to the Dalton Highway, Nabesna Road, McCarthy Road, as well as a whole host of other pothole laden forestry, dirt and gravel roads. That being said, doesn't mean it can't be improved. The propane mount worked here perfectly. It uh, was really easy access to hook up the hose when we were running the heater. We liked having the extra fuel, although that's not the jug I have in here right now. The water, all of that worked great. If there was one flaw that I'm not sure if I care about because our simple solution or our quick solution may be the permanent solution, by putting so much weight out here, seven gallons of water, five gallons of fuel, some extra storage, the 11 pound propane tank, this is a lot of weight, and my pivot point, my hinge point, my fix is in the hitch all the way back here. I used one by three square tubing, that was to keep everything nice and tidy, worked well with the bumper, but when you get out this far with this amount of weight, puts quite a bit of twist from all the way back here. It did twist a lot, got a little droopy, not to a point of failure whenever we had it open, but enough that I ended up adding a little hood prop of all things. I actually made a little foot for it and it's just a telescoping hood prop. We drop it out, we pop it up underneath there and it keeps this uh, a lot more sturdy. I really don't see a way around uh, changing that. If I go to beef this stuff up anymore, if I were to remake it, we're just adding way too much weight back here. In the end, again, it put up with a lot with no failure, it just sags when it's open a little bit. And I kind of like being able to level up the table, the table anyway. Speaking of table, it worked really well. We loved having it. It does get dirty on dirty roads, but it was really easy to clean up and everything. When I made it here, it was really made on two fronts. Number one, it ended up being this length because, well, I had a piece of aluminum that was this size. It's about 24 by 16 and it was here, so I made it around that. I shifted it as far this way as I could without interference from the tailgate so that I could try to be under our awning if it were gonna be raining. A flaw with moving it this far this way is that while we're cooking, if anything's spattering oils or grease or anything and it's spitting and spattering, I didn't want to get that on the carpet or anywhere in the interior of the truck. So we were constantly closing and opening and everything. I think my fix is going to be not to move it out, 
but I'm actually gonna make this go all the way out to this other hoop. So we're gonna end up with a 16 by almost three feet table. That way, uh, if we're worried about splatter, I can kind of move the stove down this way. We can cook down there. And if we're trying to stay dry and undercover, we can sneak back this way and just deal with it. So uh, other than that, the everything else about that has worked great. Just wanna be able to get away a little bit. Water storage, uh, we are really good on water. Like we, when we first got into this, we used to carry two of these and then we'd come home all the time with like one still not used. And that's when we were uh, traveling with our younger son as well. On this trip, really water was not a problem to find. We were able to find fill up stations. In fact, we never got more than half. And that was with several days of taking our showers and washing our hair and everything with this. The geyser shower really does help with water consumption, even with regular showers. So this seven gallon, we are thinking about replacing with this five gallon scepter jug. It's actually a 20 liter, I believe. Uh, so it's, it's close to five gallons. An advantage that we have to this, one is just size, reusing this space, but also we're able to hook up and pressurize this with just a little bit of pressure so we can get a hose on it and move it away without having to take the top off. We switch the top because this gets dusty and then move the jug over so you can get underneath it or drain it. We'll be able to hook a little hose and kind of get away uh, to do that, um, which we're pretty excited about. We also moved our fuel uh, down to the side of the truck with a small rotopax. That's because throughout the Alaska trip and everywhere we've gone, we've carried fuel often and we've never used it. Um, even on this trip, we ended up using it to help out a small couple that ran out of gas. We ourselves didn't uh, didn't need it. We had planned uh, on not using it. So going from a five gallon of storage down to the two and a half that we're able to keep in the space available on the side of the truck, uh, I think we're gonna be just fine. The only other thing is Alana talked about those leveling blocks that are currently inside. I think we are going to move those outside, uh, probably just in one of those totes that we had out here. We'll figure out something with this space. Since the water will be have moved to here, this is probably gonna be like a little firewood space. So uh, you can buy, you're not supposed to travel with firewood, but you can find at campgrounds and also uh, known safe wood from like grocery stores and things like that. If you're trying to save a buck or two, being able to strap that down and not this spot for those last couple of miles to camp, I think will be nice. Now, speaking of strapping down, what I had used for the jug here and the totes that were down here was one of those cam lock friction kind of grip um, straps. It worked okay, but I always was worried about the jug moving. Like it never really let up on us, but it was a constant concern to me. I just wanted something that I felt like had a hold of these things a little better than we were ever able to get just with that little clamp. So we've repurchased some seat belt automatic so we don't have to worry about latches and everything. This will just come up auto retract uh, to keep this really easy for us. And we're gonna replace those whenever we have anything that needs to be strapped here. So not major tweaks. If I'm feeling froggy and get crazy, maybe in the summer, I'm thinking in order to help in order to help with this moment and some of the little flexy stuff that we get when everything's really loaded, either remaking or cutting a hole in our steel bumper. The Rebels come with a steel bumper so that I can access some frame mounts over here and not rely on the hitch clear back here for a swing. I may do that. We are left to make something. And that's because we want a driver's side swing. When we come out under our awning, we wanna stay under our awning with the truck. And the 1500s, the Rebels, all of the Ram 1500s, there are some aftermarket bumpers out there, but very, very few offer a tire swing or any kind of swing built into them to begin with. And those that do exist often have a passenger side swing. That makes sense for most because if you've got a tire or something, you want that to swing away from the roadway. That's really not our use. Our use is um, always in the campground where that's not really a problem and we much prefer it off the driver's side. So due to the lack of aftermarket support and our unique desire to have a full length driver's side swing, it's always gonna have to be a homebrew. So whether we keep tweaking this or make something new, well, only time will tell, but uh, we'll keep you updated on that. So I think that's it on the exterior stuff. I do think that wraps it all up for us and what we plan to do. If you have any questions or if we missed something that you want to know about, let us know in the comments below. Yep. Otherwise, we hope to see you out there soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.